Camp, going into camp. Well, when we first got here, we were teaching the guys the offense and the terminology and the calls, and you know they got that down pretty well now. And and now the big part of fall camp is going to be just developing our mentality as a unit. That's going to be huge for us as a unit, but also just for our football team in general. And so much of the success here has been kind of on the mentality offense line. Not that they've been dominant every single year or the, you know, the best in the country like that, but they just kind of like they go, the team goes as they go. So we want to take a lot of pride in that and make sure everything we're doing right now and all our conditioning and all of our workouts that we're kind of leading the way with just our mentality and continuing to build that through fall camp. How nice is it for you to come in and have four guys that, that started last year back? It's good. Sometimes it's it's good and bad because it's, sometimes it's good to have a blank canvas and mm -hmm. they don't know anything and you just tell them and they do it. And, and, and sometimes it's like, oh, this is how we've done it before and this is how, you know, it's okay if I do it this way. So it's got its advantages and disadvantages. But those the, those guys that have played are awesome just because they have some game experience. And I think that's crucial just because they know the urgency of preparation. Lots of times if you haven't played a bunch before, you just don't know how it is to prepare and now you can just feel those guys that have been around they like know it's fall camp and they kind of got that internal clock and they're feeling like it's time to go it's time to kind of get revved up a little bit and start getting some work in you, you mentioned darren college and there's a streak at boise state going back to darren college where if you're a multi-year starter at left tackle you've gotten drafted into the M nfl i think it's like six straight left tackles that have started at least two years yeah, obviously john is going to try to extend that this year what, what have you seen what did you see from john in the spring and is he a guy you think that's going to get a chance to continue his career at the next level? Uh, that's one of those things. Like I've never coached in the NFL, so I yeah. don't. I don't really know if he has that opportunity. The thing that I know, like he does a great job preparing. He does a great job on Monday morning when no one's looking, working, and putting in time and getting extra treatment. Like those are the stuff that he does. He does really well. He does a great job bringing along the young players. So. Like, if he's good enough, I'll let the NFL scouts kind of figure out physically if he can make it. But um, I know just mentality-wise and work ethic-wise and just kind of all those intangibles, he definitely has those things. What's it like to play O-line in the Tim Plow offense? You got to think extremely fast. So that's, that's something that most offense alignment aren't used to. They want to kind of take their time. They want to be able to communicate, ID the front, know exactly where they're going, get a nice long snap count so they can kind of time it and roll into the snap count. And we don't have that luxury in this system. so. Those guys have to think extremely fast, make a bunch of decisions extremely quickly, and still be physical. So that's kind of always the balancing act is just getting those guys confident in their communication and making sure that they're communicating efficiently to be able to come off the ball and still play physically. How much did it help that you already had familiarity with the offense? If you're, uh, you know, didn't hadn't worked with it before, how hard would that be for you to learn and to communicate it with the players? I, I think the big thing that that we try to embark on the players is like. It's not the, the running backs are taught to play one way and the line's taught. It's like this is how we teach the play. And the quarterbacks know it and the receivers know it and we all do it together. And I think that kind of helps separate because everyone's speaking the same language. So if something arises or we have to make an adjustment, it's really, really easy because everyone's kind of had it installed a specific way with specific terminology. So my experience is kind of irrelevant because the offense is there to help kind of streamline it and get the best players to play on the field as soon as possible. How important is the run? Everyone talks about the passing numbers in his offense, but I mean, how important is the running game and you know being able to run the football? And I know a lot of things contributed, but last year Boise State was last in the league in rushing. I mean, how how much do you guys need to have the running game be a part of what you do? It's a huge part. It's a huge part for the offense. That's a huge part for just Boise State in general. I mean, like this place has had a ton of success running the football extremely efficiently, and that's what we want to continue to do is run it efficiently. And you know, it doesn't matter if everyone in the stadium knows we're going to run the ball, we still be able to got to convert on third down or fourth and goal. So. A lot of that comes down to mentality. Like if it's fourth and goal, it doesn't matter how much you bench press or squat. It's like your mentality is going to be able to run, to run the ball efficiently. So that's kind of what we're trying to build in fall camp is that mentality. When we need to get the yards, run the ball, that we're, we're able to be successful. And the right tackle battle obviously is one. I know you're going to say there's competition everywhere, but I mean, I know people are looking at the, the right tackle spot. Uh, how, how do you look at that and, you know, and, and kind of how you try to find somebody there and who, who's all competing for that? The great thing about that position is there is a ton of competition. That's kind of coach speak, but it, it allows whoever's competing like they're going to get better and whether they win the starter position or not like they're going to raise their game so as you guys know like it very rarely to the starting five that start the first game finish the year so there's going to be some shuffling and guys are going to get dinged that's just part of playing the positions because they're so physical so whoever ends up starting that first game against ucf you know we need that guy who doesn't start still continue to develop and grow because there's a chance that he's going to end up being a starter one time uh, in the year and it'll it'll all help each other out just because they've had that competition to get that spot. Do you see the, the, the right tackle coming from the, you know, Ben Dooley, Uzo kind of other guy category or, or is there a chance?
somebody fits better somewhere else and one of the other four that started last year could bump out to tackle? No, I think uh, as of right now, yeah. It, it's funny because we talk about Ben doing I mean, the guy was playing defensive line last year. Like, yeah, he got and, and two tackles in the game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's still, it's just, it's such a difference between last year and this year. And so, you know, Ben's, Ben's got a great opportunity to come in and compete. Uzo's got a great opportunity to come in and compete. So it'll be fun to just to see those guys elevate. And um, one of them's going to have to, like, take that next step to go, to go in that spot.